If you view J.D. Vance's stance as a principled defense of state rights, individual autonomy, and the significance of communities governing themselves based on their own values, his position on abortion aligns with a broader commitment to sovereignty. Let's talk about a, another big issue. It was talked about at the Democratic National Convention. It's being talked about on the campaign trail. Abortion. Sure. Democrats made the case this week and beyond this week that Donald Trump, if elected, will impose a federal ban on abortion if he wins. Now, Donald Trump says he won't. But can you commit, Senator, sitting right here with me today, that if you and Donald Trump are elected, that you will not impose a federal ban on abortion? I can absolutely commit that, Kristen. Donald Trump has been as clear about that as possible. I, I think it's important to step back and say, what has Donald Trump actually said on the abortion question? And how is it different from what Kamala Harris and the Democrats have said? Donald Trump wants to end this culture war over this particular topic. If Kamala, excuse me, if California wants to have a different abortion policy from Ohio, then Ohio has to respect California and California has to respect Ohio. Donald Trump's view is that we want the individual states and their individual cultures and their unique political sensibilities to make these decisions because we don't want to have a nonstop federal conflict over this issue. The federal government ought to be focused on getting food prices down, getting housing prices down, issues, of course, where Kamala Harris has been a total disaster. So I think Donald Trump is right. We want the federal government to focus on these big economic and immigration questions. Let the states figure out their own abortion policy. So let me just follow up with you a little bit on that point, because I've been talking to Republicans, including Senator Lindsey Graham just last week, who've made it very clear that if Donald Trump is elected, if you are elected, they will continue to press this point. Senator Graham said to me, I'm going to keep saying that there should be a federal ban if such a piece of legislation landed on Donald Trump's desk. Would he veto it? Well, I think it'd be very clear he would not support it. I mean, he but said would he that veto explicitly. It? Yeah, I, th I mean, if you're not supporting it as the president of the United States, you fundamentally so have to veto, veto it. So he veto a federal abortion ban? I think he would. He said that explicitly that he would. And, and I don't again, think Lindsay, he's ever Lindsay, said explicitly Lindsay, he would. He Lindsay said Graham, that to you? Lindsey Graham, Kristen, uh, I, I would be surprised. I mean, again, I, I need to see the context on what Lindsey Graham said, because Lindsey Graham himself has not advocated a federal abortion ban. Lindsey Graham has advocated federal a, fe a federal ban. minimum standard. Now, to be clear, that is not Donald Trump's view. Donald Trump disagrees with Lindsey Graham on this, but no Republican, at least no Republican with any reasonable power, is saying that we should have a complete national abortion ban. I haven't heard that from any of my colleagues. And to be clear, Donald Trump, I think, has staked his position and made it very explicit. He wants this to be a state decision. States are going to make this determination themselves. By pledging not to ban abortion at the federal level. Vance underscores the importance of handling such issues at the state level, reinforcing the belief that states should mirror the values and sensibilities of their residents. This approach champions the distribution of power, which is vital for maintaining a diversity of thought and governance across the United States. Vance's perspective can be seen as a pushback against federal overreach, emphasizing the need to respect the cultural and political differences between states like California and Ohio. This reflects a conservative dedication to pluralism within the federal framework, advocating for local communities to manage their affairs without being dictated to by Washington, D.C. His remarks echo a broader theme of allowing states and individuals the freedom to define their own values and laws, particularly on deeply personal and moral issues like abortion. This approach respects the autonomy of communities to make decisions that resonate with their unique circumstances rather than following mandates from distant authorities. The abortion debate, in this context, becomes a microcosm of the larger struggle between freedom and determinism. By advocating for state-level decision-making, Vance essentially supports a model where individuals exercise their choices through the state, rather than having those choices imposed by a central power. Moreover, shifting the focus from federal intervention to regional control is a strategic move to diffuse the emotional intensity of the abortion debate. By framing it as an issue of state rights rather than a national moral crisis, Vance seeks to reduce feelings of helplessness and frustration, offering individuals and communities a greater sense of control over their own destinies. His calm, rational approach contrasts with the often emotional critiques from the Democratic side, potentially appealing to a public weary of the chaos and conflict that national debates on social issues tend to bring. Vance's clear commitment to leaving abortion decisions to the states is likely to resonate with those who value state rights and individual autonomy. At the same time, 
This stance may disappoint those on either side of the abortion debate who seek a definitive federal solution. However, by framing the issue in terms of federalism rather than morality, Vance might successfully appeal to those concerned about the erosion of local control and the expansion of federal power.